All right, photosynthesis uses various colors of light, um, especially light in this area here and in this area here. Photosynthesis does not use green light. Plants look green. Why do they look green? Because green light is reflected by the plant, not absorbed. So it's bounced off. But chlorophyll has a structure with magnesium in the middle here. And this area right here is either CH3, if you're talking about chlorophyll A, or CHO and chlorophyll B. They will absorb slightly different wavelengths of light, but they absorb most of the other wavelengths other than green. We can see, whoop, we can see that chlorophyll A, found in all plants, as well as chlorophyll B, uh, it absorbs light right around here, you know, 420 or so um, nanometers in terms of wavelength. This uh, graph was made using a spectrophotometer. It measures what colors of light something absorbs. Not what it reflects, but what it actually absorbs. And so if you put something in here that was white, nothing would be absorbed. Something that's black, all wavelengths would be absorbed. And this, in this case, they put chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, and another kind of pigment found in leaves known as carotenoids in to see what colors were absorbed. Here we can see chlorophyll B, another molecule found in plants, absorbs slightly more bluish green light. And then down here we can see that chlorophyll B absorbs kind of yellowish light and chlorophyll A slightly reddish light. Uh, this other pigment known as carotenoids, it appears orange. Look, it has the name carrot in it, right? It looks orange when you see it, but they absorb uh, bluish purple light as well as slightly greenish blue light as well. So these are the major pigments involved in photosynthesis. And in fact, carotenoids act as an antioxidant in the leaf because the leaf produces a lot of high energy electrons uh, when it's absorbing light. And you don't want to have redox reactions tearing your leaf apart. And uh, antioxidants help to prevent oxidation reactions when you don't want them to happen. Now let's look at a cool experiment that, that, that was done back in, the, uh, back in the day to determine what colors of light were used by photosynthesis. And this is before we had fancy equipment like a spectrophotometer. So this guy named Hans Engelmann took aerobic bacteria. Aerobic bacteria are bacteria that like oxygen. And he put them on a microscope slide. He also put a filament of algae. This is spirogyra, a type of algae that photosynthesizes. And then he put a prism and, and he sh uh, put light on that prism so that you get the rainbow here, right? The different colors, the spectrum. And then he watched to see what would happen. And look, the algae, I'm sorry, the bacteria formed a clump over here and they formed a clump over here. So he could see that, oh, these algae really like it right over here in the red, and they like it way over here in the bluish purple. That's where oxygen is made. That uh, corresponds exactly with what you get when you use modern technology and you look at what colors are absorbed by a leaf. So basically what this graph is on the bottom is an average of this graph all put together. This is called the action spectrum of photosynthesis, meaning what wavelengths of light are most used by photosynthesis to, to do action, to make food. And we can see that bluish purple light is used by photosynthesis and yellow orange to red light is used for photosynthesis. Green light, not so much. So this is kind of the average of all those pigments together interacting, causing photosynthesis to happen. So if you're gonna go into space, for example, uh, or you're gonna grow uh, marijuana in your closet, don't waste your time with these colors of light, right? You need to focus on colors of light wavelengths of light that would actually cause a plant to grow, and that's going to be either dark blue or red. So this is the basic layout of photosynthesis. This is a chloroplast note. So that's not a whole cell. That's an organelle there. That's a chloroplast. And inside is an organelle called the thylakoid membrane. So there's one thylakoid. Uh, water's going to come in. Light's going to hit that. We're going to get oxygen produced as a waste product. That's what we breathe. Um, we're going to have electron shuttles produced, in this case NADPH, kind of like the NADH of respiration. ATP is going to be made in this process as well. And then there's going to be another part of this called the Calvin cycle uh, that's going to take carbon dioxide and it's going to make sugar out of it. Okay, And these are the steps, the basic roadmap of where we're going in the next part of the lecture.